In this video, I'm going to share what you should wear when you go day hiking. There are a myriad of options for you to choose from, outdoor stores, big box stores. What do you choose? I'm gonna share what I've used for thousands of miles and what's worked well for me. Please note, I am not sponsored by any of the products in this video. I paid for them with my own money. Let's go. From top to bottom, this is exactly what I would be wearing if you met me hiking in Grand Teton or uh, Sequoia National Park. This is the exact outfit and in fact the exact clothing I wear. So we'll go top down here. The first thing is a hat. You really want some sort of hat to keep the sun off your face and especially off your nose and your ears. Now obviously a baseball cap doesn't cut it for the ears because oh yeah those bad boys are gonna get burned. So one of the critical things that uh, I take that I'm wearing that you might not see is sunscreen. That's right. Believe me there's a song about that about wearing sunscreen later when you get into your 40s and you start getting oh wow there's a spot we really need to look at that. Believe me, sunscreen starts there. If the ball cap doesn't work for you, what I would recommend is one of the boonies hats. These things are great because now it protects all of my face, my neck, everything there. If it gets windy, I can put up here. This is the breezer style from Columbia. Super nice, you can go um, Crocodile, Dundee, Australian. The myriad of hat choices is beyond imagination, but if you want to make sure to protect your ears, your nose and your neck from sunburn, the boonies hat is a good option. Whenever I do the baseball cap thing, if I'm hiking away from the sun, I always turn my cap around. That way I protect my neck and I don't get burned there. The next thing I come down to is the shirt. Whether you go sh long sleeve shirt, short sleeve shirt, tank top, topless, well, I guess for ladies, I've seen literally women hiking in bikinis, it's the craziest thing ever. But what I've done over the years is I've actually migrated to the long sleeve shirts, but not just the long sleeve shirt. You think, oh, that's too hot and miserable. Well, assuming I can get the button undone here, I'll show you what this is. See this elbow button right here? If I roll up the sleeves, there's a little secret strap here that allows me to roll up my sleeve and if I can get it buttoned on YouTube we'll see what happens. I have to fast forward this part. Ah, there we go. And now I basically have a short sleeve shirt for total comfort. I mean obviously one sleeve down, one sleeve up. But why do I wear a long sleeve shirt? Because if it's buggy, <laughs> trust me, you want to take care of that. I don't have the bug spray out here but that's something I wear. But when it gets cooler, I can simply unbutton and drop my sleeves. Or when the bugs happen, boy, having a long sleeve shirt is a huge boon. Now, obviously one of the reasons I also wear this is for sun protection. Because even though I'm putting sunscreen after hours of hiking, you get like sweaty and it comes off. So even though it's a little bit hotter and sweatier, I avoid the sunburn and that's just me. Everyone has their different thing, but the key thing of this whole rig here is synthetic or wool or silk. But at the end of the video, I'm going to share what exactly not to wear if you want to stay safe and comfortable in the environment. I'll put a link below to my book, Adventure Expedition One, where I talk about all these different clothing items. From her, whether you go with the shirt or I also have synthetic t-shirts, Really love these things, just about anything will do. They're not expensive and if they get trashed, it's no big deal. So it just depends on what's uh, going on there. But also this outfit I've worn down to like 10 and 20 degrees, obviously I have jackets on there. So that's something to look at too. The next thing is the belt. I always have some sort of belt, my favorite nylon belt here. I thought about manufacturing these after I made one. So uh, leave a link below if you like this sort of belt. It travels well. I can go through TSA security without sending anything off. And it's really nice, handy to keep your pants up or your shorts up. But also in an emergency, a belt is a super, super handy thing to have. The next thing on me are my pants. I used to do a lot more hiking in shorts. Uh, you know, the, I've got these sort of pants here. The Eddie Bauer pants, I'll show you those in a moment. The guide pants, super love them. They're kind of expensive, but uh, you know. But 
I used to wear shorts a lot, depending on what's going off. It's really hot and sunny. I will wear shorts, uh, pretty handy there, synthetic uh, all the way. And there's a reason for that. I'll tell you again, end of the video. But these are great because they have the cargo pockets. I believe cargo pockets are now out of fashion, but there's a reason. See this in my pocket here? That's right, bear spray, folks. If you are in the Rocky Mountains and you're going to be dealing with grizzly bears potentially or aggressive black bears, having pockets where you can get to them is super, super handy. These have cargo pockets as well that I can carry my bear spray in. Believe me, if you are dangling your bear spray off your pack and a bear charges you, after you're pooping and peeing your pants, the last thing you're gonna remember is, oh, I gotta get my pack off and get my bear spray. Ain't gonna happen, folks. So have your bear spray holstered up, ready to go to draw in one second. So that's something that I also wear. Going down here, I'll give you some other options. Are my gaiters. Now I'm gonna put a link below to the video I've done about these gaiters and my other hiking gaiters, my heavy duty ones. Love these things, outdoor research, there are other options. Again, links below to these, but gaiters are an essential for me because it keeps the grime, the grit, the mud, the sticks, the sand, and the snow out. Even though it looks kind of weird, people have said it actually looks like you know what you're doing. Nobody knows exactly what you're wearing, but hiking gaiters, put on your boots, I'll put a link below on how to wear these properly as well, are super nice. It makes a big difference in my hiking experience. Last but not least are my hiking boots. Whether you go sandals, flip-flops, super heavy trekking boots, whatever the case is, make sure to choose something that is durable and protects your feet, knowing that you're going to be walking in sand, gravel, grit, and who knows what else. Now, that's my basic outfit here. What are the other accessories I bring for clothing? I'm not gonna be able to put this on. Is uh, are two couple things, neck buffs. These uh, polar buffs, the polar fleece ones, when it gets really cold, I can put this on and still do very well. Looks like I'm choking out like I'm Steve Jobs with <laughs> my, <laughs> my turtleneck here. But a, a polar fleece that I can put over my head, I kind of look like a babushka, but it covers my ears, which is a huge thing. That makes a big difference. I have also hiked with my buff. I've actually used this particular buff in multiple locations. You like Survivor Man here, covers my ears, covers my head. If it gets too hot, I can pull the buff down and use it as a headband to prevent hurting my ears. But the top of my crown here, my carrot top there, yeah, still cool. So now I look like from from uh, you know from the neighborhood I grew up in. But this is also very helpful to protect from sun, wind burn, and also the ears. If it gets a little bit chillier, one of my other options is another hat. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. I've actually used and used this hat plus this gator set to actually put on my head to make me warmer, and also. One of my key things is if it gets even colder and windier is I use a headband, polar fleece again, windproof. The headband, I've loved this thing. I've had this thing for probably 20 years, REI, love it. And then if it gets even colder where the headband is keeping my ears protected, I then put my watch cap on, which is also windproof fleece. Woo man, that makes a big, big difference. Now, in my backpack, I'm usually not carrying my warmth layer of jacket. I'm simply tying my jacket around my waist. That way I can use it when I need it. It can protect my backside if I need to sit on something. It's very handy. I'll put a link below to my video about layers later. That's a whole other story. And then also if it's starting to rain, of course I have some sort of rain jacket that I will put on and armor me up. So all these different things that I have here wearing are super handy in keeping me comfortable, safe, and ready for just about anything in the outdoors. One other thing to consider besides the rain jacket are rain pants. If I know it's gonna be really miserably rainy, I'm going to bring my rain pants that way. I can put the pants on and do pretty well and keep myself dry. Disadvantage of rain pants, can't wear my 
holstered uh, holster bear spray, but the rain pants are super handy and definitely a consideration if you want to go out in the rain. One thing you also want to consider are bringing some basic thin liner gloves because invariably once the sun drops down and it starts getting chilly, you're sweaty, your little fingers are going to get cold. So what I do is I simply bring these outdoor research liner gloves, slide those bad boys on and I can hike well below freezing, even like Ant Antarctica on a nice calm day. I've used literally the, well not these gloves, I destroyed them, but this style of glove, they've been super handy. So consider just putting a light thin pair of liner gloves into your pack. If you think at all possible, you might be gone into the afternoon or the evening. Super handy. And now it's just the things that I promised you do not want to wear when you're hiking in the outdoors. Yes, you can wear them. Yes, you'll be fine. But it's when things go wrong, that's the kicker. Oh, by the way, I forgot, duh. Socks, wool socks, smart wool, uh, synthetic right, wall, right, right socks, sorry. Links below to those videos as well. I forgot, yes, I've got socks under here. Yeah, socks, huge thing. Don't use the cheap white cotton socks because after a while they're gonna rub and they're gonna tear your feet to ribbons and shreds. So socks are a big thing. Sorry, I forgot about that. But the two things you really want to avoid are the basic cotton t-shirt. Even though cotton is comfortable, it's very nice. We all love our cotton shirts. Over time, when you're hiking all day, it'll get sweaty. And then when the sun drops and you're out later than you expected, this cotton shirt will make you cold. They say cotton kills in the outdoors. Cotton's great for the jungle, but for general hiking in North America, eh, or uh, at least the lower 48, and also jeans. I do not recommend jeans. I've seen a lot of people hiking with jeans. We all love our denim. Yes, I know. I've actually gone out when I knew I was gonna shred my jeans, but in general, I prefer my synthetic pants to jeans. So if you take the jeans, know that the moment it rains and these things get soaked, you are going to freeze along with your cotton t-shirt and then you perhaps will get hypothermia and things will go bad. So definitely you don't want to wear jeans and a cotton t-shirt if you can at all avoid it. Hopefully this video has been helpful in my sharing of what you should wear for hiking in the outdoors and any mountainous terrain, wilderness, desert or whatever. This outfit works super great. It keeps me cool, it keeps me warm, it's highly versatile. My name is Aaron Linsdow, I'm a polar explorer and professional adventure. Please check out links below to my books, Antarctic Tears Adventure Expedition 1, Lost at Windy Corner, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Crucial Knots to Know, The 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, and The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, as well as check out links below to my show, World Beyond and Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your hiking!